Hey there, what is up you guys? I am Jerry and welcome back to the channel, The Chicago Griller. At the time of filming, it is November 2020 and the holiday season is looking a little bit different this year. Now in my family, for example, we're down to just four people in our immediate household. So I thought a big old 15 pound turkey wasn't really reasonable this year. So when I was thinking of alternatives, I thought duck sounds perfect. And the bonus to the duck is that it actually fits inside the Weber cube, which is exactly what this channel is all about. If you think you're going to like this video, definitely smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe if you haven't already. Then join me inside and I'll show you how I prep this bird. For Thanksgiving this year, I am roasting up this four and a half pound or two kilogram duck with giblets removed. I got this duck from Mariano's, a local grocery store chain here in Chicago. Anyways, this bird has been defrosting for about two days. So I'm gonna take a paper towel and pat off any remaining excess moisture from the bird. When doing so, don't forget to also go under the wings and inside the thighs. Also, don't forget what you do on one side of the bird, you need to do the other side. So turn the bird around and pat the breast side dry as well. Now that my duck is dry, I'm going to go remove any loose skin and fat from the bird. And as you can see, I have this really large flap of skin where the head and neck used to be. So I'm just going to take a pair of kitchen shears and cut that off. And there we go. I'm just gonna discard this flap of skin. Now turning the duck over, you will also notice there's quite a bit of fat underneath the skin on the breast. I am not going to trim this. Instead, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna grab a sharp knife, like so, and score the skin. Here, you are just making light incisions into the surface of the skin in a crisscross pattern and you can see this better from above, like so. And the reason you're doing this is that when you roast this duck, it allows a place for the fat to escape and render. And see, I've only cut the skin and did not break into any of the meat. Now I'm also going to loosen up some of the skin from some of the joints, like underneath the thighs. Duck is pretty fatty, so opening up these pockets in the skin allows the fat to render out. Now I am going to turn my duck over and score the backside as well. And I actually just cut a little bit too deep here, but I don't think that is going to be a big deal. And as you can see, I cut into the meat, but I think there's enough fat in the bird that when it renders, it will still protect the meat and keep it moist. Speaking of keeping the meat moist, we are now going to dry brine our duck with some salt and pepper. Sprinkle this salt and pepper mixture directly on the surface and into each nook and cranny of the bird. The salt I'm adding here will eventually be absorbed into the meat of the bird and in turn will also pull water from the skin into the meat. So this dry brining step is very important to help keep this bird moist after we cook it. Anyways, as always, what we do on one side, we are also going to do on the other side. So I am adding a generous layer of salt and pepper onto the breast side of the bird as well. And now that my duck has been thoroughly seasoned, I'm going to place it into the fridge uncovered for 12 hours to let the dry brine get to work. And now here I am one day later. It may be a little bit hard to see on camera, but the skin has dried out significantly. And that's exactly what we're looking for because this will crisp up nicely on the grill. That said, there are still a few pockets of moisture, so grab a paper towel and pat that moisture dry. And like before, look under the wings and inside the thighs and pat those sections dry. And once you've patted your duck dry, we can stuff the empty cavity. For today's duck, 
I'm keeping things simple and just stuffing it with some roughly chopped garlic. There we go. Then I'm going to add one whole lemon sliced and into the empty cavity that goes. And finally, some sprigs of rosemary. Now all the ingredients that I just stuffed inside this duck are more for the fragrance and aromas. You can, of course, use traditional holiday stuffing, but if you do, you will need to increase your cook time so that it cooks through. Now that my duck has been stuffed, I am going to grab the tail and fold it up so that I could seal the open cavity. Grab both drumsticks and pull them together and secure them with some kitchen twine. Now I don't have kitchen twine, so I just rolled up some aluminum foil. It works just as well. And now with my duck trust, I am going to turn it over breast side down on my roasting rack and pan. And at last, we are ready to roast this duck. So out to the grill we go. And out here on my patio today, I have preheated my Weber Q to a medium heat. And as you can see, I have been preheating it with a smoke pouch filled with pecan wood chips. I need to push that off to the side because here comes the duck. As you can see, I was able to keep my duck on this regular roasting rack and pan because surprisingly, it does fit inside the Weber Q2000. Anyways, we shut the lid and we're gonna roast this bird for about 20 minutes per pound. After about 30 minutes, this duck is still a long way from completion, but I am gonna turn it over onto its back with the breast side facing up. I don't have heat resistant mitts, so I have to do this with two pairs of tongs. Anyways, now that this bird is flipped, I'm gonna continue roasting at this medium heat. Now, before I shut the lid, I am going to grab a probe for my new ink bird thermometer and place it inside the duck so I could track the temperature of the cook in real time. Again, we are roasting at 20 minutes per pound on a medium heat. That's about 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 degrees Celsius. And if you want to check out my gas control knob, it's right under the medium setting. 375 degrees Fahrenheit, which matches the temperature inside the lid. Anyways, while this roasts, it's time to prepare the glaze. The glaze used today was very simple. I'm starting off with a half cup of balsamic vinegar. And to that vinegar, I am squeezing approximately a quarter cup of honey. And I'm just eyeballing it here. That looks about right. And to the vinegar and honey mix, I am now going to squeeze in the juice of one whole lemon. And now, mix all the ingredients together. Now, it should be noted, this is a thin glaze that will remain watery but the lemon and the honey infuse a lot of sweetness and citrus into the balsamic vinegar. Anyways, let's head on back out to the grill. About one hour has elapsed, and I am going to go pull out the temperature probe from the duck. And as I pull that probe out, just listen to that crackle. This is why I like doing this duck on the grill, because I don't mind the splatters. Anyways, with my two tongs again, I'm going to turn the bird back over onto its breast side down. Then, grabbing my bowl of the glaze, I'm going to spoon and baste this glaze all over the back side of my duck. You're going to have plenty of this glaze, so go ahead and apply it very, very liberally. Once you've applied a bunch with your spoon, grab a basting brush and even it out. Now I'm going to place the temperature probe back into the duck, into the thickest part of the thigh. 
There we go. And continue the roast. And after another 15 minutes for a total time of one hour and 15 minutes, I am going to once again remove the probe very carefully and turn the duck over one final time and apply one last layer of glaze. So what I did to the back side, I'm now going to do to the breast side. Spoon some of the glaze thoroughly and liberally over the breast side and even it out with a basting brush. And at this point, I should have only about 15 minutes or so left in the cook. So I am going to plug this inkbird thermometer back into the thigh and wait until my inkbird registers 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Or for those of you outside the US, that's 74 degrees C. And now here I am, one hour and 30 minutes into the cook. My inkbird thermometer is telling me that my duck has reached an internal temp of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So this duck should be just about ready. However, I want to verify the temperatures with another temperature pen. And you see this thigh is at 160 degrees Fahrenheit. And this thigh is at about 162. And that's fine because with carryover cooking, it will rise a few degrees when the duck rests out of the grill. But here the breast is at 155 which is lower than I'd like. So I think I'm actually gonna cook this bird a little bit longer. So I'm gonna insert the ink bird into the breast, then shut the lid and wait until this alarm goes off again at 165 degrees Fahrenheit. And now here we are 10 minutes later for a total cook time of one hour and 40 minutes. Now this duck should be done and one last temperature verification and this breast is at 162 degrees fahrenheit so i am going to say this duck is done it looks and smells and sounds delicious so let's pull all these wires out perfect and now get this duck off the grill So check this out. This duck smells delicious. The skin looks like it has crisped up pretty nicely. And after about 10 or 20 minutes, I can plate it up and have it join the Thanksgiving festivities. And another look at the duck on my Thanksgiving table. And one last look after we carved it all up. What piece are you gonna go for first? Okay guys, so that was how I roasted up a whole duck for my family's Thanksgiving centerpiece this year. Definitely give this a try if you're looking for an alternative to turkey at your next holiday gathering. It is so good, you might not even go back to turkey. Trust me on this one. Mm. Definitely big like there. Anyways, if you enjoyed the content of this video, as always, definitely hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. You'll also want to hit that notification bell because for my next episode, I am going to show you exactly what you could do with this pile of holiday leftovers. You don't want to miss out. I'll see you all next time. Stay safe and see you then. Bye now.